Well, we've seen most all the big names in free agency land where they're gonna land. Most of the teams have paid what they're gonna pay, and I don't think we're gonna see too many more impactful offseason moves here. So, how did every team do during free agency? Well, today, we take a look. NFL free agency is well underway, and it's been a bit of a doozy. Huge names have headed into new homes, with the likes of Kirk Cousins, Derrick Henry, Russell Wilson, and Saquon Barkley now arriving on new teams. While some teams have completely rebuilt their rosters, and others have allowed once promising squads to fall into disrepair. While plenty have filled in much needed holes, others have really let the opportunity to improve pass them right by. So with that being said, today we're ranking every NFL team's free agency so far. In another situation to another team where you go and you're the vet, you know, you're not the young guy anymore, but... Number 32, Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings let arguably their two most important players walk. Kirk Cousins, their franchise QB, is gone, and Daniel Hunter, their monstrous sack machine, is also at the door. Jefferson is still in town, but trade rumors are already swirling. Replacement for Cousins is Sam Darnold. Oof. The Vikings have gone from a routine playoff team to a disaster in the blink of an eye. Number 31, Denver Broncos. The Broncos have decided to pay Russell Wilson $85 million in cap money before letting him play for the Steelers. That is, uh, well, that's a whole mess all on its own. And it's essentially going to set the team back for two whole years. They also cut Justin Simmons, one of the best safeties in the NFL, just to save a couple of bucks. So without a viable QB, they'll have to pick one this year. And with Jerry Judy traded, he ain't going to have anyone to throw to either. The Broncos, as of right now, are in a tough spot. Number 30, Dallas Cowboys. After another disappointing first round exit, the Cowboys should have been ready to rock and reload the roster to compete for the Super Bowl. But instead, they did absolutely nothing and have lost some of their best players to other teams. Now, to be fair, they didn't have much cap room. But I mean, come on, losing Tony Pollard, Tyron Smith, Stefan Gilmore, Tyler Biotish, and Leighton Vander Esch is going to make your team significantly worse. Number 29, Buffalo Bills. The Bills had no cap room, but essentially lost half of their defensive starters because of it. With Poyer, Hyde, Floyd, Jackson, and Lawson now all gone, the defense is going to look very different next year. On top of this, they lost Gabe Davis and Mitch Morse on offense. When a third of your starting team is out the door, the results are not going to be pretty. It's an especially big problem when the closest thing to a replacement for any of them is Curtis Samuel for Davis. We'll see how the Bills can compete this year, but uh, it's not looking good. Number 28, New England Patriots. The Pats have come down to earth after the Brady era, and free agency is not saving them. By trading Mac Jones, they've essentially signaled that they're going to roll the dice on a new franchise QB in the draft. However, losing CB, JC Jackson, DT Lawrence Guy, and O-lineman Trent Brown and James Ferentz is a big blow to the team. Antonio Gibson and Austin Hooper aren't exactly world-beating weapons for the new QB either. Patriots fans will get another dose of reality this season, unfortunately. Number 27, New Orleans Saints. The Saints had no cap space, so they really were only able to add Willie Gay and Chase Young. However, they're more likely to fix their issues in the draft than free agency. The Saints came in second on a tiebreaker in a weak division, so not making any big moves is pretty brutal. Number 26, Carolina Panthers. The Panthers need help, and they really didn't get it this offseason. They did fill in the offensive line with Damian Lewis and Robert Hunt, and got Deontay Johnson for Bryce Young to throw to, but beyond that, they just didn't really go over the top. Trading away the dynamic Brian Burns is very tough, and losing Frankie Luvu, Jeremy Chin, and Dante Jackson in the Johnson trade, on top of all that, means that the defense is absolutely depleted. Unless Bryce Young takes a huge step forward, it should be another tough season for the Panthers. Number 25, Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks brought in a defensive head coach and then lost most of their best defensive players. Bobby Wagner, the perpetual All-Pro, is out. In fact, their entire LB core is out with Jordan Brooks and Devin Bush gone as well. Their starting safeties are gone too, both Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs. Only Sheldon Richardson is coming back. They filled in some of those defensive gaps, but have a long way to go still. With a questionable Geno Smith under center, they spent multiple draft picks to bring in Sam Howell, which is a bit of a head scratcher. The Seahawks don't look like they're going to be much better than they did last year at this point, but who knows? Things can still change. 
Number 24, Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins lost key offensive linemen Connor Williams and Robert Hunt, and that's just the start of their problems. Though an already battered Tua can't really take a worse offensive line. Key defensive losses include Christian Wilkins, Savian Howard, pass rusher Andrew Van Ginkle, and Eli Apple. The Dolphins have been unable to replace most of these pieces with comparable talent, and that means a worse outlook for the next season. Unless they could somehow pull a rabbit out of the hat at the draft. Number 23, Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers have essentially lost all their offensive skill players. Keenan Allen is traded, Mike Williams went to the Jets, Austin Eckler went to the Commanders, while Bosa and Mack remain on the team, Justin Herbert is going to have a whale of a time succeeding without any of his former favorite targets. Number 22, Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are purely rebuilding, so it's hard to be too critical of their lack of real moves. They added some defense with Sean Murphy Bunting and Bilal Nichols. They also let Marquise Brown walk and traded Rondale Moore to bring in Desmond Ritter as backup. Their offseason will be much more defined by the draft where they have seven of the first 104 picks. Number 21, Chicago Bears. The Bears are a haul in on Caleb Williams as the first pick. They've added DeAndre Swift and Gerald Everett and traded for Keenan Allen to give him all the tools that he's gonna need to succeed in the NFL. They also got additional draft ammo for former QB Justin Fields. Caleb Williams is gonna save this team if the team is going to be saved. Number 20, New York Giants. The Giants lost the face of their franchise to the rival Eagles. They lost Xavier McKinney, one of the best young safeties in the league, to the Packers. At his age and price, it's a bit strange they didn't put up more of a fight to keep him. And trading for Brian Burns is easily the best move of the offseason for the G-Men. With Daniel Jones clearly not being the answer at QB, the Giants are probably treading water for another season here. Number 19, Indianapolis Colts. The Colts really didn't go for any big players outside of their organization, resigning guys like Michael Pittman Jr., Kenny Moore, and Grover Stewart. They brought in Joe Flacco as a backup in case Anthony Richardson goes and gets himself knocked out for the season again, since Gardner Minshew is now out. Keeping the roster stable was definitely the best move they could do, since the team nearly made the playoffs even without their promising young QB. Number 18, Los Angeles Rams. The biggest news for the Rams this offseason was the retirement of Aaron Donald. That is impossible to replace. And they haven't even signed a defensive lineman to do it yet. However, they did add offensive lineman Jonah Jackson and re-signed guard Kevin Dotson to try and keep Matthew Stafford safe. Van Jefferson has gone to the Steelers and Gerald Everett to the Bears. So some work is definitely going to need to be done in the draft to get the offense to the same place that it was last year. Number 17, Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jags' biggest move was franchise tagging a player completely worthy of the term, Josh Allen. They brought in former UCF wide receiver Gabe Davis back to Florida and beefed up the secondary with Darnell Savage and Ronald Darby. If Trevor Lawrence can finally break through to the top class of quarterbacks, well, the Jags should be in a very good place. Number 16, Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders made two huge free agency moves. They brought in monster Christian Wilkins on a major four-year $110 million deal and made Gardner Minshew their starting QB. However, they did lose Josh Jacobs and stud guard Greg Van Roten. Hunter Renfro was also cut for cap concerns, leaving Minshew with fewer weapons. The Raiders look to be in a better place than the struggling squad of 2023, but we'll see just exactly how much once the season actually starts. Number 15, Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals dealt former Pro Bowl RB Joe Mixon and replaced him with unproven piece Zach Moss. They also lost some of their vaunted wide receiver depth with Tyler Boyd gone. T. Higgins was franchise tag, but is looking for a trade out and could become a holdout issue. They lost their star CB Chidobe Awuzie and DT DJ Reader. Adding Geno Stone does fill in their safety issue, and the replacement of Reader with Sheldon Rankins isn't too bad, but we'll see how Moss can replace Mixon and who can fill in for Awuzie. The Bengals need Joe Burrow to be healthy more than any free agent signing to actually be able to succeed this season. Number 14, New York Jets. The Jets went out with limited cap space and got protection and a weapon for Aaron Rodgers. Guard John Simpson and stud tackle Tyron Smith joined the squad. Mike Williams will line up with Garrett Wilson in the wide receiver position, which was a huge need for the Jets. The only major loss here was Bryce Huff, who had 10 sacks last year. However, Huff may have been a product of Salah's system and someone like Will McDonald could fit right in. Like the Bengals, the Jets need healthy QB play more than really anything else. Number 13, Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens signed a big name in Derrick Henry. If they can balance his workload, that could be a huge gain for a team that just loves to run the ball. However, their biggest signing was probably the re-signing of Justin Matubike, their destructive DT. Losing Patrick Queen and Ronald Darby does hurt though. Still, the Ravens should be ready for another pretty good season. 
Number 12, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks brought back Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield on big deals. These are huge moves that'll keep the team in the hunt for the playoffs in a very weak division. They're also reunited with Jordan Whitehead to keep the secondary strong. However, the loss of Shaq Barrett and Devin White at the edge and linebacker position is pretty significant for this defense. We'll see how it ultimately all shakes out for the Buccaneers in 2024. Number 11, Tennessee Titans. The Titans lost Derrick Henry, but got Tony Pollard to replace him. A younger back with a completely different play style. It's gonna be interesting to see how he actually fits into this run-heavy offense. Calvin Ridley joins DeAndre Hopkins in the WR room, and Wouzier comes in to shut down opposing wideouts. Unfortunately, their QB situation is still largely up in the air. So who knows, these moves may not be worth as much as they would to a team with a much better player under center. Number 10, Philadelphia Eagles. The run-focused Eagles brought in a huge name in Saquon Barkley. With a better O-line, Barkley should be able to recapture some of his old magic after a year where he failed to average four yards a carry last season. Bryce Huff brings another weapon for the pass rush, and Devin White gives the Eagles a frightening LB core. Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox's retirement are much more significant losses than any other player in free agency. The Eagles need to shake off whatever funk crept over them in the second half of last year and have this roster ready for another playoff run. Number 9, Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs filled their two biggest needs this offseason, re-signing Chris Jones and getting a solid wide receiver. Jones is back on a massive five-year, $160 million deal. Marquise Brown is in the building as a deep threat and the companion to Travis Kelsey. Keeping Legereus Sneed and Deion Bush in the secondary is also a big-time win. They did lose some offensive line talent in Donovan Smith and Nick Allegretti, but that's likely where they'll turn their eyes in the draft. Chiefs are ready to make another run at that Super Bowl. Number 8, San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers have all their offensive ducks in a row, so they focused on defense this offseason. Specifically, they took their pass rush to the next level. Leonard Floyd has come on board, one of the best pass rushers in the sport. They also took a flyer on Eater Gross Matos, hoping that he can get to his prospect potential. The Niners brought in players to help them destroy quarterbacks, because, uh, well, one Patrick Mahomes destroyed them in the Super Bowl. Number 7, Cleveland Browns. The Browns made the big re-signing of Zedaria Smith to keep the duo of Smith and Garrett together. They also got Richard Jefferson, no relation, to further strengthen the defensive line. Devin Bush also makes their LB core that much better, as does the trade for Jerry Judy in the wide receiver room. The Browns are retooled and ready to make a playoff run. Let's see if they can do it. Number 6, Green Bay Packers. The Packers got a defensive linchpin in Xavier McKinney, one of the best safeties in the sport, playing in his age 25 season in 2024. Bringing in Josh Jacobs to tandem with the re-signed AJ Dillon it gives them the best RB duo in the NFL. Their biggest issue is the loss of a few O-linemen like Bakhtiari and Runyon. However, overall, this team is improved and is looking to do another deep playoff run. Number 5, Detroit Lions. The Lions had serious defensive needs and filled them. DJ Reader is a terrific DT. Marcus Davenport should come back from injury to do some damage off the edge. Meek Robertson and Carlton Davis will hopefully shore up that secondary. And the Lions offense, well, it's set, though losing Josh Reynolds is very tough. Now all they need is the D to back them up so that way they can push to their Super Bowl hopes. Number 4, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers brought in a Hall of Famer to play QB, Russell Wilson. That's right, and they also got Justin Fields for a fourth rounder in case Wilson doesn't work out, which, uh, well, might be the case. Patrick Queen gives them one of the best LB cores in the entire NFL. Van Jefferson keeps the wide receiver room very strong, and Dante Jackson gives them another good piece for the secondary. The Steelers are looking to stop being a 500 team and actually return to their previous heights. Number 3, Washington Commanders. The Commanders had money to spend, and boy did they spend it. They brought in Austin Eckler to pair with Brian Robinson at RB, they beefed up the O-line with Tyler Biotish and Nick Allegretti, they brought in Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner to strengthen the LB core, Jeremy Chin gives them an improved safety as well, and of course, Zach Ertz gives them a strong TE. Since they'll have to draft a QB, they've really set up a team to perform around whoever they get. The future is looking pretty dang good for the Commanders. Number 2, Houston Texans. The Texans had a shocking run to the playoffs last year on the back of CJ Stroud and are just looking to get better. They traded for Joe Mixon to give Stroud a reliable running back. They got Jeff Akuta to lock up opposing wide receivers. Dalton Schultz stays in town and remains a top TE option for their young QB. Blake Cashman and Sheldon Rankins are tough departures, but overall, the Texans are in a really good spot for 2024. 
Number one, Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons objectively gave the biggest boost to their team by adding Kirk Cousins. With loaded offensive skill players like B. John Robinson, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts, all they really needed was a QB. This addition is all that really matters. With no serious losses besides some older but still solid guys like Calais Campbell and Bud Dupree, Kirk immediately makes them the favorite in a very weak NFC South. But which team do you think won free agency? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. But hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.